Hello. We scientists have now located a build which we scientists believe gives people the power to explode the universe. <laughs> Hello dear viewers and welcome to the build. Uh, I have a nostalgia problem. I already experienced nostalgia for the nostalgia I experienced while making the Oblivion class builds. So to get my fix of nostalgia I made a Skyrim build based off of a protagonist of a very old expansion to a very old game called Heroes of Might and Magic 3. In the wonderful Armageddon's Blade expansion there was a snow elf ranger named Gelu. Apparently his name is pronounced Gelu. Uh, I don't know why. I He's not French. Anyway, moving on. Who confronted the devilish forces of Eofall to take a horribly overpowered sword from them and keep it away from those forces. He eventually destroyed the universe by accidentally crossing this Armageddon's blade with another OP sword. We won't talk about it anymore. Skyrim's snow elves are different to those in Heroes 3. They are a lost race, rather mysterious. So this guy here will also be very lonely and lost to begin with. Convinced all other members of his people are long dead. Maybe he will meet one or two in his travels, but his main goal is to find and master the Infinity Sword here instead of the original's Armageddon's blade. The fire magic imbuing the sword will captivate his mind, pushing him towards exploring the school of destruction and fire spells in particular. Gameplay-wise, this is a true hybrid build, combining direct combat with stealth and magic which comes with its usual set of problems with attributes distribution and deciding on what to prioritize. I suggest to focus on the sneak archer bit of the build first, maybe with occasional venture into the two-handed close combat against easier enemies. And then, after you find the infinity sword, start developing and perking destruction and really go full in your two-handed skill. It gives you a manageable progress plan and it also is immersive, as this character has no interest in magic at first, only developing it under the influence of the terrifying artifact. The attribute problems will be partly fixed with the Goldur's amulet and one Summer Mist enchantment. Speaking of mods, here they are! We need uh, quite a few, it's an unusually long list for me, but you can skip like a half of them without that much of a difference in power or mechanics of the build. If you don't care about the looks I'm rolling with, you can also skip to fashion mods, modular clothing system and cloaks and capes. Well, you may also need race menu mod uh, to make your high elf immensely pale so you can larp as a snow elf. Valkyrie perks, especially lion's arrow and dodge roll will matter a lot. Even Star Atronach Stone can make all our spells more effective at a cost that is almost irrelevant to a hybrid build. Summer Mist provides us with an enchantment increasing all three attributes at once as long as we already have all of them increased by other items. And another allows us to power attack when out of stamina but with reduced damage. This is darn convenient because the Infinity Sword has a few extra effects on power attacks. A sideways power attack will send a fireball that on top of decent damage also launches those it hits into the sky. Forward or standing power attacks will start an explosion centered around you. Not only that, but as long as you wield this sword you get fire and frost resistance and some extra health regeneration. This is a god item, but on legendary difficulty some challenge will still surprisingly be present. Also, even with all this power the sword cannot match the original Armageddon's blade, which would grant you an ability to annihilate entire armies effortlessly, which is why I also used Thunder Child. It is used only for the Armageddon shout because Armageddon's blade, and since the shout only works outdoors and generally speaking simple fire breath will be much more useful to you, this mod can be easily skipped. 
Apocalypse spells, especially Volcano and Incendiary Flow, are quite essential, especially the flow, because with Lion's Arrow perk it creates a very aesthetically pleasing line of long-lasting flames follow your arrows. Elemental arrows and legendary crossbows and bows are only used because the original Gelu could train some immensely precise sharpshooters using somewhat modern-looking bows. So the scoped hunting bow with the fast and straight-flying steam arrows are used to emulate that. Reliquary of Myth enhances the Goldur's amulet with extra attribute regeneration and offers a death save once every half an hour. It's cool, but with your mixed combat style you should definitely be able to get by without these extra powers. Odin was occasionally used for the Blazing Strikes spell. Given the lack of elemental resistance enchantments, the resist elements could also be used at times. Again, you can skip those easily. The sword itself will do enough stuff on power attacks and the dodge roll perk will allow you to dodge all elemental damage with some proper timing. The attribute ratio is pretty much equal spread between the three. You could settle with a bit less stamina because we use the grit enchantment, but in the end you will need it for more than just power attacks. You will also roll a lot and zoom with your bow. Magicka will get an extra 50 from being a high elf, so you could also consider a tad less Magicka. Overall, the even spread seems to be the safest and it works well enough in the end when your gear is all complete. The standing stone is the even star Atronach, which will enhance our spells with extra 30% effectiveness at the cost of decreased magicka regeneration. The penalty is mostly inconsequential to us, as we can always switch to another combat style if out of magicka. The skills to perk are two-handed archery, light armor, sneak and destruction. Smithing and enchanting were also used for the sake of legendary difficulty, but there is only five perks spread across both crafting skills. Perkless enchanting should be good enough on master, especially with some elixirs. In two handed take the great sword branch and the crowd pleaser, although the crowd pleaser can be skipped without much of a change. It gives you a stackable increase to your damage output for kills with a two handed weapon, but actually many of your kills will be performed through the explosive powers of your sword, not by the blade itself, so the opportunities to really get the crowd pleaser rolling will be few. Then almost all of the power attack perks, excluding the rolling charge, which works best for long distance charge attacks, meanwhile we are much more likely to use a bow first if we have a long distance to cover. Vicious charge is unlocked because it combines so well with silent roll and dodge roll in sneak, giving us a perfect combat opening attack that makes us invincible for a brief moment and then deals some extra damage with a potential to knock the target to the ground if the war master effect also kicks in. As a ranger we need plenty of perks in archery of course. We go for pinning shot via the long distance branch of far shot both ranks, impaling shot and arrow to the knee. This way the far away targets, even if they don't die instantly due to sneak attack, will have to approach you while taking damage over time from impaling shot and getting slower and slower from consecutive applications of pinning shot. On top of that, imprint the incendiary flow spell onto your arrow shots and they will also have to traverse a long burning line of flames while the enchantment of your bow will deal fire damage over time until the end of the fight. <laughs> This, this combo is actually better than the God Sword, this is insane. Because I relied on Steam Arrows from Elemental Arrows mod, I also opted for Hunter's Discipline. Those arrows are rather annoying to craft, so this perk spared me some headache. The build and all its combos will still work well with any old arrows, so skip the Hunter's Discipline if you have better ideas. In Light Armor we need almost all rightmost perks, except Untouchable. Obviously Agility will serve us well as it always does, allowing for more power attacks, sprinting and rolling. And the evasive sprint will encourage mobility while partly offsetting the lack of elemental resistance enchantments. We also take fit, training and keen senses to maximize our armor rating and stay true to the original's Gelu's looks as much as possible. I even skipped the head item completely, enchanting my cape 
Instead, now in sneak we want mainly the dodge roll and the deadly aim, both have prerequisites that won't be very useful to us, but it's worth it for the rewards. There is a neat leap attack coming from mixing charge perks with roll perks, and obviously since our early game is likely to look much like your typical sneak archer, deadly aim is a must. Since we can't afford item slots for muffle and fortify sneak, both ranks of silent movement are also a good idea. Then the quite self-explanatory choice of perks and destruction. All the fire perks, including the unholy scorched earth, which converts corpses into a long-lasting bits of firewall, extremely useful in narrow hallways, particularly when your arrows also leave a patch of fire behind. <laughs> yes, yes, destruction. Hellstorm to deal with meaty enemies faster and dual casting so we can use the lion's arrow in archery. Finally, to fully improve the infinity sword and to craft the steam arrows we need arcane blacksmith and dwarven smithing in the smithing skill. And to stay effective on legendary while having full freedom in fashion choices, the armor enchanter in enchanting is quite useful. The enchantment on our bow is insanely useful and powerful regardless of perks, so save yourself a point and ignore weapon. Enchanter. To craft the steam arrows you will also need 25 in alchemy, so why not use some perkless alchemy at times? It will give you some resistances when needed and fortify underdeveloped skills. Also, fortified destruction potions are easy to make and will help this build almost regardless of the magnitude. I mean, it won't be a wasted effort regardless of the magnitude. And now for the items. Obviously, this terrifying sword of infinity has been previously discussed. It grants resistances and health region. It grants different explosions and different fire attacks and is generally awesome. The bow is a scooped noble hunting bow enchanted with fire damage lingering, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course! Combined with lion's arrow and incendiary flow, this bow is almost more powerful than your sword. And here is the list of things to wear. We have the Goldur's Amulet, Fortified Destruction Enchantment on Black Leather Pants, Fortified Two-Handed on Shadowed Netch Leather Boots, Fortified Archery on Shadowed Netch Leather Bracers, and Grit on the uh, Cape, and Triptych Attributes on the Ring. Fortifying all three damage-dealing skills seemed inevitable for legendary difficulty. In fact, you may want to replace Grit with another Fortified Two-Handed, especially with the build completed because the situations of running out of stamina are going to be rarer late game. Nevertheless, Grit will let us use the explosions of our sword even when out of stamina, so I kept it just in case. Triptych attributes is uh, not that easy to get. It improves all attributes by 50, regardless of your enchanting skill, by the way, if you already have all three attributes fortified by other enchantments, hence the Goldur's amulet. And here are the spells and shouts, the ones you will most frequently use with the build near completion. Obviously, before that, point blames work brilliantly if you tap the attack button instead of holding, and fire runes can be cast from some distance, so use them before your lion's arrow is unlocked. For the shouts, we have fire breath and armageddon. Armageddon is mostly for the fluff, <laughs> as it is useful very situationally. With the volcano spell, it does create a lot of fiery chaos around you which is kind of the point of this character, so I use the combo even if it's not that powerful. Fire Breath not only deals fire damage, but also staggers, so use it against enemies trying to traverse the incendiary flow left behind your arrows and flaming piles left behind the corpses of their friends. Fire Breath will make them stay in that unpleasant situation for a little bit longer and take a little bit more damage. <laughs> Okay, to sum up, this is a, a, a fun build, uh, almost too fun, I would say. I wouldn't normally use anything like the Infinity Sword, it pretty much overshadows most of other efforts you can make to become super powerful, but the Armageddon's Blade deserved it, and so this build happened. <laughs> uh, this is it for now. Have a lot of fun with this one, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and uh, consider supporting me on Subscribestar. We will! Meet each other again in some non-crafting less OP build, I think. Bye-bye. Uh,